Live from Orlando, Florida, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering Enterprise Connect 2016. Brought to you by Oracle ZDLRA, Vonage, and Cafe X. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Zontazanio. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE's special presentation at Enterprise Connects, our first event in the unified communication space. I want to just do a shout out to our sponsors, Oracle, ZDLRA, Zero Data Loss Appliances. Don't lose the data, be a hero, don't be a zero. Vonage and CafeX, thanks for supporting us to come out to theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. On the ground here with Adam Swider, who's with Google, Google at work, Google Enterprise, Google Apps. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much, John. So obviously, um, we love Google. Obviously for the search engine, it's been great for all these generations, but Google Apps, really is the poster child for working online. You guys have great software, but this is a user expectation change. This is not the data center, server, client, server, legacy. It's the new world of the cloud. That's what's happening here in the unified communication space, really for the first time. I mean, there's been glimmers of change, but more than ever this year is the big stake in the ground. It's the cloud, all kinds of new stuff's happening, and all the proof points are coming to bear. So I want you to share quickly the Google update with apps and things that you're working on and why it's important for the folks watching to their businesses. Sure, so we're very excited about Google Apps and how it's really helping companies unlock the creativity and productivity in their workforces. And it could be you know, a, a startup company that's just starting out on their technology platform and choosing Gmail and Google Drive and Google Docs as a natural choice, or it could be a large, well-established company that's looking to transition off of their old legacy infrastructure into a much more modern IT. And we were here today at uh, the event sharing the story of Motorola Solutions and how they made that journey. But fundamentally, the world of IT is changing. And the notion that IT chooses and then rolls out platforms to the users from on high, and this happens every few years, you know, those days are, are gone. Every day, every individual wakes up and gets to choose, are they going to use a new piece of technology on their mobile phone? And so that type of expectation is coming more and more into work, and Google Apps really plays well into that desire for the technology to allow the people to connect and communicate and then kind of get out of the way. So Gmail, Google Docs and Drive for collaboration, Google Hangouts for real-time communication, all of that coming together in a very well integrated and, and effective suite that allows organizations to again unlock the creativity and innovation of their employees. Google's been very fundamentally and proud, but also kind of aggressive technically. Obviously anyone knows Google, we've been following Google since it's been founded. Very technical um, oriented company. Um, and not arrogant, but in a good way, maybe you can say that. But they deliver great solutions. On the enterprise side, you guys have done that, but now the integration message is big. You got Dropbox out there, you got Box, you got other competitors around you. What's your guiding principle around the enterprise? Because there's a big partnering ecosystem that involves it, certainly channels and developers, and you have Google Code among other things. What is the philosophy around Google and the enterprise? Because you got to be technically superior. You got to enable people to be successful. At the same time, play well in the sandbox with others. What's your, what's your vision and strategy? Yeah, so there's a couple of elements, I think, to our strategy. The first one is, while we're really focused on the future of work and how people are going to communicate and collaborate, we also understand that we have to build bridges to the past and allow some of those older technologies to interoperate or at least provide a bridge to get them over into sort of this new world. Um, and giving them some amount of tools to make that migration, but also encouraging them to think very deliberately about how much of that they want to invest in. Because we've seen in our own organization, the more of those bridges that you build, the more interoperability you build, the longer it keeps that old stuff around, and ultimately that stuff ends up becoming a drag on innovation. And we've seen that ourselves internally. And so this notion of being able to build just the right amount of bridge, but also provide just the right amount of push to get into a more modern way of working is where we see kind of our sweet spot. And one of the things that I'm most excited about, and many people at Google are as well, while we've worked over the last two, three years to kind of externalize our infrastructure, uh, we recently announced the addition of Diane Green, co-founder of VMware, to lead a newly formed unit within Google whose sole purpose is to externalize that infrastructure for computing, per all types of computing purposes for organizations of all sizes. We're really excited about that statement of how committed we are to the enterprise, uh, the, the hiring of Diane Green makes in that area. And Diane Green, certainly a Palo Alto mom, I've seen her with on the sidelines of soccer games in the past. Obviously, Mendel, her husband at Stanford, technical family, the brain powers off the charts, congratulations. But this brings up the whole notion of open source as well, developers, and enabling that. You guys are still going to be open source driven, you're still going to partner and integrate well? Absolutely, open source has always been a big part of what we do at Google. We're very committed to open source platforms. Android, of course, is an open source. Chrome is an open source. Um, 
And so we very much believe in open source as being one of the fuel that you know, keeps computing going the way our founders and many of the people that work at Google uh, would like to see it continue. Uh, and so that sort of ethos and that uh, endless desire to investigate and explore and try different areas where technology can make a difference in people's lives. That's what keeps Google yeah. going. That's what keeps yeah. Larry and Sergey coming to work every day, 15 years into it, and, uh, and very passionate about well, it. Well, Sergey's at the new building on, on, uh, on San Antonio, the X building, which is secret location where all the cars come out of. Sergey's certainly back at the ranch, and Sundar run the store over at Google. I got to ask you about uh, some things like uh, Web RTC. Certainly that is getting a lot of play yesterday and continues to be important. Things like WebRTC, a lot of stuff, these technologies that are not new to Google, and some of them you give away and enable for the marketplace through open source, are now becoming key. What's hardened, what's mature, and what's growing that you're excited about that you can point to customers and say, watch these big trends, watch these technologies? Yeah, so obviously video is huge everywhere and just growing, right? We sensed initially the demand for video advertising that led to the YouTube acquisition, and at the time, even for two years after the acquisition, everybody said, when are you going to start making money off this thing? Obviously, fast forward a few years, and it turns out to be an incredibly insightful uh, investment. Uh, similarly, video is becoming more and more pervasive in every type of knowledge acquisition or training or learning, and increasingly in the social examples, too. And so this focus on video, both real-time and recorded, I think is going to drive a lot of the work that we do, in particular on the Hangouts product, but also I think in some other areas that bring video into different parts of the professional life. So while I can't announce anything today, stay tuned, watch this space, we're very excited about some stuff. I am very interested in video. Normally we do a live event, but I mean, the video world today is really kind of built on old technology. You look at CDNs, for instance. I mean, I was doing a survey and trying to figure out the high watermark, but I don't think anyone's cracked the code on 12 million concurrence. I mean, certainly the Super Bowl talked about 50 million viewers. That's not concurrence. So we got a problem. There's more than 12 million concurrence in the world. So video transit is a big deal. Is that what you're referring to? Well, I think we have done a lot of work on the, cons on the consumer side of the YouTube platform to make it a video distribution platform at scale. And I think those types of numbers are, are achievable on the YouTube platform. <laughs> I think the magic for us comes as we start to bring the YouTube platform into the enterprise context, apply some of the enterprise controls that we've applied to the other products that have been brought into the enterprise space, and sort of light up YouTube for the enterprise. That's something that'll come down the, the, the road a little bit. Uh, but again, it's something that I think is pretty unique that Google has to offer that not many other technology. It's business. interesting, a lot of the web scale companies have to build stuff on their own and or organic acquisition and, and uh, organic growth and also acquisition through YouTube. But the enterprise now is a consumerization thing. I mean, and web services, everything is a service, is a driver. That's impacting this world of unified communications. And you know, quite frankly, it's kind of old. Old school mentality. There's going to be dead bodies and the new players. New school, old school. We've seen some people try to reboot and put lipstick on the pig or cloud wash this new world and fail. I mean, we've seen IBM, for instance, with Verse, with email. I just Lotus Notes with some new fresh paint and that they're having their struggles, they got to reboot that thing. Um, so there's a challenge to really be successful. So I want to ask you directly, what do companies need to be, not vendors, but your customers? Because they got to pick a player that's going to be around. In this new world, it's not the old with a new fresh coat of paint on it. It's a new way. What are those things? What should customers look at when they're making architectural decisions, when they're making buying decisions, as they evaluate, what should they look for in their vendors? Yeah, I mean, I think in some ways, uh, looking at a cloud vendor is the same as looking at any other vendor, right? You want to understand sort of what's the financial uh, foundation that the company's built on. You want to understand their, their technology innovation. But I think ultimately, you also want to look at companies that are able to invest at scale to provide a reliable, secure, and accessible platform um, and so you're probably going to be looking at some of the big players here. Certainly some of the small ones that come in may have a very unique and compelling value proposition. Those are ones you need to take a little bit extra scrutiny in terms of, of uh, uh, due diligence. Well, I mean, so, I mean, I just say like Oracle and IBM, some of those, they have, they, some of them are, are horizontal, but some are silos, right? So silos, I tell, customers tell me, I don't want a silo. I, mean, I, want, I don't mind vertical integration. I don't want a silo. Yes. So that's a dynamic. Yeah. I, what other things do you see, things like that? What do you see? Well, I think you see the customers saying things like, I don't want a silo, but you see the vendor saying, I really do want you siloed because then I have more stuff that I can sell to you later, uh, especially the hardware vendors. That's the old model. That's, that, that is the old model, but the ones that come from the old model, that's how they're transitioning into, into the new world. Um, 
in situations. But you don't think that's effective? No, I mean, I think what you're seeing in cloud is a pay for uh, a consumption type of model, or at least one closer to that than an upfront license model, that actually you know, manages to put the risk in the right place versus putting the risk all up front and assuming that all the users are going to get and to it. Why should you over provision, over pay for something you don't need? Exactly, but that was the model of the past. Now with cloud, we have a much more dynamic uh, flexibility to you know, uh, uh, provision and deprovision users without any significant cost or without any time or resources required. And so now it's easier for the vendors to you know, come up with a pricing model that's more value and consumption. -based. That's awesome, so the next final question for you, or final series of questions is, engagement and data are a big part of certainly the DNA in the Google ethos, but that is now the mindset of customers as they look at connected devices from IOT to consumers. You can measure everything, right? So hey, what a wonderful thing. So engagement's a user experience issue, data is a measurement issue, both can work together, predictive, prescriptive, all these things come together. What's your thoughts there and how do you see that and what advice would you give the customers as they start thinking about using these new ways to create a better outcome for their business? Yeah, so the first thing that I would say is we tend to take the things we're doing today and kind of map them into a new technology, which may provide some benefit, but I really think that what you're going to start to see are new, whole new classes of applications that are getting put together. And I think the way you have to get started is literally with like a little innovation lab, a couple of folks that you know, are officially dedicated to experimenting with some of these new technologies with an end goal of kind of uh, uh, jettisoning, jettisoning a few of their projects into more full-fledged deployment. But this notion of very rapid prototyping, obviously extreme focus on the user, which is one of our mantras, and understanding as you seek to develop a solution to a problem that the user has, getting them involved earlier in the cycle, and again, creating these little sandboxes of innovation where people can both use the technology and focus on the user feedback as they're prototyping these things, that's how you got to get started with this new technology. All right, final question. What's the future of work mean to you? For the folks watching, CXOs, developers, people who are creating value, what is the future of work? I think the future of work is doing what your company was formed to do and, and bringing to life the passion that formed the company in the beginning and not have to worry about things like standing up email servers or collaboration platforms, right? Have the technology be provided to you as a service, truly, where all you have to do is pay for it based on usage and not have to worry about all of the technology infrastructure setup and maintenance, et cetera. That allows the people in the organization to get back to the mission of the organization, whatever that may be. Final question, Enterprise Connect, this is the premier show for unified communications, a world that is being lifted up by a lot of great forces. What is the big thing happening here at Enterprise Connect this year? What's different this year that you see and what's it look like going forward? One of the big themes that I've heard this year that seems a bit new to me is simplification, and you're even hearing it from the vendors that created the complexity in the first place. So when they start talking about simplification, you know that this is sort of a real mainstream thing, and it brings a little bit of a smile to my inner self, um, because I think that's one of the hallmarks of our products, is really, really simple, easy to use, you know, billions of users without any training required, and, and that allows us to come into an enterprise with typically the less you know less disruption than you might see if you were rolling out a new you know office suite or a new back end uh, system. Andy, thanks so much for sharing your perspective. Andy from Google here inside the cube, on the ground. I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching.